Hello everyone. Wish you a very happy Holi. So this video is in continuance with our Lakshmi Kan series with the name Kanthast. So today we need to start Union Executive, which is part five of our Constitution, Article fifty two to Article seventy eight. When we when we say Union Executive, there are five positions which come under this. UPS has also asked one question in prelims on this. and one option was cag and the question statement was identify which of the following is not part of union executive so some students who understand the general meaning of executive is to execute the laws so that student was confused that cag is a executive is a position right there to execute laws and this position is with union government then by this logic cag should be considered as part of union executive right but my friends the general meaning of a word may be different from the inferred meaning in a specific part in our constitution for example the meaning of state in general or you can say the provinces is different from the meaning of state in article 12 Article thirty six, right? So that is why if UPSC was asking this question, that uh, what is the meaning of union executive? Which positions are part of union executive as mentioned in part five? Then you should know these are the positions. Okay, president, vice president, prime minister, council of minister, then attorney general. Okay. Now let's talk about honourable president. So here is the list. Now. first thing should which should come into your mind is who can be you know president of india what is the qualification then what is the election process who can vote in this election process how the selection is conducted what is the process ups is asked question on processes as well then impeachment appointment is done election is done then impeachment then finally pars so pars part we are going to deal in the next video today we need to focus on these parts okay so first let's talk about qualification first qualification is citizen of india now it is not saying that that person should be citizen of india by birth it is saying citizen of india but when we read about qualification of us president that person should be citizen by birth for example famous hollywood actor arnold schwarzenegger so he became governor of california state but he could not became president he could not fight the election of president because he was born outside us he was born in sicily Ita near italian peninsula so now he should have completed 35 years of age minimum age is 35 no maximum age is written even if you are 90 years of age and you think you can fight and become us president oh sorry uh, indian president then you can become indian president uh, but you have to go to the process that i am going to tell you he should be qualified for election the member of lok sabha now many students have this question sir honorable president is not part of lok sabha correct it is also said that when a person is president then that person should not be part of lok sabha rajya sabha or any state legislature should not be part should not be in any office of profit means any government office from which he or she can draw some money remuneration that is correct then why the word lok sabha is there the reason is because we are talking about qualification for election right so there are some qualification for election for lok sabha members as well right so those qualification for lok sabha member are going to be applicable for honorable president as well some changes are there which are specifically mentioned here for example for becoming lok sabha member minimum age required is 25 years right but here it is specifically mentioned 35 years right he should not hold any office of profit as i just told you should not be on any other position of government from there that person can actually draw some money right a sitting president or vice president the governor 
of any state and a minister of the union or any state is not deemed to hold any office of profit what does it mean it means if you are not in these position you are on some other position then you have to resign from those positions right but if you are on these positions then you can transition to become you, the, the president of india it will not be considered as office of profit right qualified as presidential candidate if you are qualified then this transition will happen so please remember this can be a scope of question right they may say that which of the following is not considered as office of profit when it comes to election of president of india not come under right other statement can be which of the following is considered can be considered as an office of profit so you should remember these details sitting president vice president governor any state or you know minister of the union or any state so it is quite easy to remember president vice president governor minister of union or state right now how president is elected the word is elected means election is going to happen in some people are going to vote now is this direct election or indirect election when i say direct election it means people of india means common people they are going to vote but in case of president there is no direct election election is indirect it means our representatives in lok sabha rajya sabha state legislative assemblies elected representatives they have the power to participate in the election of president not the common masses right so there was this debate in constituent assembly as well that why not uh, conduct a fresh election or you know that election should be uh, like all over the people you know, all the people universal level franchise should be the basis and they should participate in election of the president on this question mr jawaharlal nehru stood up in the constituent assembly and he replied that in case of india president position is nominal nominal real power is with pm if real power is with pm and this position is nominal then why you have to conduct such a big exercise that all of the people in india adult uh, people they are going to you know eligible voters are going to vote that would be wastage of time that would be you know wastage of public money right so that is why it is better to have indirect elections because our model is different from the us model you cannot say in us uh, in presidential election every adult voter they vote because real power is president na so one logic was this second logic which was given by mr jawaharlal nehru was that if president becomes comes with the direct election then there may be conflict between president and prime minister because president might say that we are living in democracy and people have directly elected me so i'm not going to listen to your advice every time i am representing will of the people do you think such kind of conflict in these two top positions would be conducive for any country no that is why this process need to be you know set in a manner where president knows what's his or her responsibilities are so that this constitution this machinery actually runs as per indian constitution right so they are elected by electoral college when i say electoral college it means members who are going to participate in election of president they are called part of electoral college and who can do that elected members of both houses lok sabha rasama please remember i'm talking about elected members only not nominated okay for example in rasabha you have 12 nominated members so that they cannot participate in election of president in case of lok sabha earlier we had two anglo indian nominated seats but in 2020 these nominated anglo indian seats were removed so now in lok, lok sabha we don't have any nominated member right so please remember elected members of the both houses plus elected members 
of state legislative assemblies. Now, <coughs> please focus. In the statement of the exam, what UPSC can do? They will say LC, legislative council. They will say elected members of legislative councils have right to vote in presidential elections. So you will say it is false. It is not correct. Now those who are thinking why if at the state level there are two houses in legislature, legislative assembly and legislative council like we have two houses at the level of union, Lok Sabha and Ras Sabha. So if both the elected members, elected members of both the houses are you know, allowed to vote then why not at state level both the houses are being allowed. There is a reason for that. The reason is not every state is having legislative council. Right? And if members of legislative councils are also allowed, then it will create disparity among states. States who are having legislative council, their elected members will be able to vote. And those who are not having legislative council, this, this, this will be like decrease in their, you can say, a participation in this cru elect crucial election. Right? I hope now you got the logic. Elected members of the legislative assemblies of UTs of Delhi and Puducherry. Now there is an interesting twist here. J and K. J and K. So J and K is a UT now and a UT with legislative assembly. But we don't have you know legislative assembly members as of now there, elected members. So there was one RTI which was filed in election commission and the applicant was asking that whether J and K MLAs who are going to be MLAs in future because elections are yet to happen then whether they are going to be allowed to participate in presidential election or not. So on this point what election commission replied they said please refer to article 54. As I told union executive Articles part 5 start from article 52 to 7 and then end on 78. So election commission saying please refer 54. And 54 is talking about this. Elected members of legislative assemblies of the union territories of Delhi and Pondicherry. It means the name of JNK is yet to be added. Although this bill was floated by our home minister himself but it is yet to be finalized. So some legal luminaries were saying if UTs of Delhi and Pondicherry are allowed to participate in this election of president just because they have state legislative assemblies then by this logic JNK MLAs will also be allowed. Okay. So this is one logic but I told you what reply of election commission was saying. Now <clears throat> let's dwell into the details of this election process. Constitution provides uniformity. Uniformity, as I told you, means parity among states, right? It has been the effort. I told you nominated members cannot vote. D also told you legislative council members cannot vote. Also, please remember, what if one or two state legislative assemblies are dissolved when election of president are finalized? So, at this moment, can dissolved legislative assembly can be revived and their MLAs will be allowed to vote? No. So it means if some M some legislative assemblies are dissolved at that point of time, it means there are no MLAs there. Elections are going to happen in that state legislature, but election of president is not going to wait till that point. Okay, that should be clear. If there's any dispute with respect to election of president, means some contender is saying sir the opposer the the other candidate has forced some document so so such disputes are going to be taken up at the level of supreme court only they will not be taken up at the level of high court please remember these kind of you know uh, you can say traps upsc lay and the decision of supreme court will be final okay now if there is incomplete electoral college incomplete electoral college means for example in three states state legislative assemblies are dissolved. So it means some states, I mean three states are not having elected MLAs. Now the election of president is not going to wait for these three states. So that is why incomplete electoral college is not ground for challenging the election of president. Okay. 
I hope these details are clear to you now, right? Now, <coughs> I use this word uniformity, parity among state. So how election happens? Have you ever voted in your life? So you must have gone to say for voting of election in election of MLA or your Lok Sabha MP. So you have used EVM, electronic voting machine, right? Now tell me, do you think in president election EVM is EVM is used? Those who are thinking, yeah, sir, EVM is better model, right? That's why everyone is using every election. We are using it in in your state legislative assembly election and Lok Sabha election. And it should be used in president election as well. No, that is not true. Because in case of president election, we have to ensure proportional representation with single transfer vote. Two words are used. Proportional representation and single transfer vote. And these are quite easy to understand. Quite easy. First, let's understand what is this proportional representation means. Our constitution tries to give weightage as per population. It means if you're an MLA from UP, so value of your vote will be decided on the basis of this formula. Quite simple. Just put total population of state here because we have to bring proportional representation. Total population of state here. Then total number of elected MLA seats means total number of elected member of state legislative assembly. For example, 404. So you have to put 404 here. If the population is say 11 crore, put it here. Multiply 1 by 1000. So this is how you are going to find vote value of MLA of UP. If you have to find vote value of MLA of say Andhra Pradesh, vote value of Andhra Pradesh, total population of Andhra Pradesh upon total elected MLA seats in state legislative assembly of Andhra Pradesh and then multiply by 1 by 1000, right? So this, by this way, you will be able to find the vote value of one MLA, okay? Now, vote value of an MP. Now, total vote val total value of votes of all the MLAs. What does it mean? It simply means, for example, we have just found vote value of one, one MLA of Andhra Pradesh, AP. Right? We are going to multiply with the number of MLAs in AP, elected MLAs in Andhra Pradesh, legislative assembly. So, we will be able to get the total vote value of MLAs of AP. Similarly, we'll, we are going to identify UP, MP, Punjab, Maharashtra. So by adding all these, we will be able to know what is the total value of votes of all MLAs of all states. Okay. So for some of you, it may, it may be like, sir, it is a bit tricky. It is not tricky. Total population, you, are not, you, you, need, you need not to count. This is available in census. Just put it here. Total vote, total uh, number of seats, those are fixed. Put them here, multiply one by thousand. So it is quite clear. Right? Adding those, you have to put here and upon total number of elected MPs, you have to put here. When I say total number of elected MPs, what does it mean? I'm using the word parliament and UPSC once asked question on this formula. UPSC is not going to ask you formula on this formula. It means to understand whether you understand the process or not. The word is parliament. It means Lok Sabha, Ras Sabha, both are involved here. So if I ask vote value of a Lok Sabha MP in president election is different from the vote value of Rajya Sabha MP in election of president. Tell me that statement would be true or false. That would be false. Why? Because I'm using the word parliament, member of parliament. I'm using the word value of vote of an MP. I'm not distinguished between Lok Sabha and Ras Sabha. So it means vote value of an Lok Sabha MP who is participating in election of president is same as the vote value of a Ras Sabha MP. Now I'm making another statement. Please answer. Vote value of a MLA of UP is going to be same as the vote value of an MLA of Kerala in presidential election. Tell me the statement is true or false? A statement is false. Because here, we are categorizing between states. Vote value of an MLA decides on the 
population of that state that is why in case of vote value of families we are going to find difference because formula says a specific state but in case of MP, we talk about all the vote value, vote value of all the MLAs of all the states, and then divided by total number of elected members in the parliament. Clear? Is it clear? And one by thousand was here, not here. I suppose now it is clear. Now, now we are going to talk about this word single transfer vote also. Okay. For this, I need to first let you nominate yourself in presidential election. Okay, then I'm going to come to that. Now, <clears throat> who can actually fight presidential election? Is it possible that one fine day you wake up and you say to your father, Sir, father, you were thinking I'm going to uh, give you PSA through this exam, but now plan is changed. Father is asking, what's the plan now? I'm going to fight presidential election. So father is saying, have you read the qualification? You are saying, yes, sir. Yes, I have read the qualification. So now, even if you are about 35 years of age, even if you are citizen of India, even if you are not barred on the basis of the mentioned criteria of Lok Sabha MP, now the point is, it's not like you are going to knock the door of Rashtrapati Bhavan or its secretary that I am going to fight election. There's a criteria there. Criteria is, you need 50 electors as proposers. Who are 50 electors? Electors means those people who are eligible to actually vote in presidential election. And who is eligible to vote in presidential election? I told you. Elected members of Lok Sabha and Rath Sabha. Elected members of State Legislative Assembly. Elected member of UTs of Delhi, Pondicherry, Jammu Kashmir can become. So now these, among these you need, you need to actually uh, befriend 50 people. You need to connect with 50 people and ask them, sir, please, please, please support me. I want to get nominated for presidential election, at least. So you will get Ashirwad of 50 people. That is the first step. But process is not complete yet. You need 50 seconders also. Another 50 people. Not these. And now you need to reach out to another 50 people. So please, please, second, please second me. Second uh, my proposal that I want to get nominated for the presidential election. So if they think, yeah, you are worthy, then they will say, Thik hai. the name was proposed by them and we are supporting, seconding this name. So when you are done with this, now you will say, Ki, hai. now I can be nominated at least for the presidential race. Okay. But you should actually uh, uh, transfer 50,000 rupees chalan, chalan into RBI account. Right. And if you get less than one sixth vote, vote, then this fifteen thousand rupees will be forfeited. Okay, if you get one more than one uh, sixth vote value, in that case, your 50, 15 thousand uh, rupees will be refunded. So I'm supposing you are not getting elected as president. Okay, if you get elected as president, then fifteen thousand rupees definitely they will be coming back to you. Okay, and you will be having Rashtrapati Bhavan with you. Now. Let's understand what is this STV, single transferable vote. As I told you that EVM is not used in presidential election. What is used? Ballot paper. Ballot paper is used. I think ballot paper is visible in front of you. This is my ballot paper. This is my ballot paper. Okay. And this ballot paper is unique in itself. Why? Because you need not to actually give support to only one person. You can give choices in sequence. For example, you are given a ballot paper and you know three candidates are fighting presidential election. Rohit, Prem and Shweta. So consider you gave first preference to Prem, second to Shweta and third to Rohit. Right? There are other MPs and MLAs, elected MPs and MLAs, part of Electoral College. They will have their own ballot paper and they will give preference according to them right one two three some people may give preference to shweta first preference to shweta second to prem third to rohit right and vice versa as a chalta rega. now when all these ballot papers are collected for example mps of lok sabha rasabha they are going to vote in parliament house right in parliament and the mlas are going to vote in the respective state legislature 
then all the ballot papers will be collected by election commission of india okay so now election commission of india will start counting so there will be three boxes you can take this example as boxes now if first ballot paper is taken and this ballot paper is saying first preference should be given to prem so now this ballot paper will be coming into this box of prem so prem has one vote in his favor second ballot paper says come in favor of shweta so this is coming into say rohit say rohit shweta so now only first preference is being counted in first sequence of counting only first preference right another ballot paper is giving first preference to say rohit so another ballot paper coming into rohit's basket another is saying say shweta shweta's basket another saying shweta shweta's basket another saying rohit another saying rohit so it means this counting will go on right now what need to what need to be checked the point at which 50% plus one vote value the quota which we say is is achieved by anyone that person will be declared as winner right and why i'm saying vote value because i told you vote value of mla is different from vote value of another state mla and these vote values are different from vote value of mp right this is not like one person one vote value there's a difference there so now when all these vote values are being calculated and it is found that there's a tie no person is getting clear majority what is going to happen now now they will look which of this which of these three you know people who get the third position so we found that prem got the third position so it is time to bid farewell to prem prem you are out of the game now you are not in the race of presidential election now what is going to happen with the ballot paper which was given to prem so we are going to extract that ballot paper we extracted that ballot paper so prem you are out of the race now what we are going to find oh look in this ballot paper what is the second preference second preference is shweta now this ballot paper will transfer into shweta's basket so shweta has one more vote right so consider for example there are another ballot paper in that we have checked oh shweta you have another so it means by this manner we are going to extract ballot papers from the last person and we are going to divide it as per the second preference and now we will be able to identify which person is the winner now you can congratulate that person as president of india right but this person has to take oath now in the start i told you why presidential elections are indirect i told you because president is the nominal head real power is with prime minister so it is inconsistent if this much power is not with president it is symbolic head although uh, you can say in the hierarchy you know a president comes before prime minister right the, but since no much not much power and we we don't want conflict in the office of president prime minister that is why it was not needed direct election costly hai right and consume lot of time now the point is oath oath of president is a responsibility of cji or other senior most judge of the supreme court okay upsc has asked question on the oath content as well okay so you should know what is the content of oath faithfully execute the office number 1 preserve protect and defend ppd preserve protect and defend constitution and the laws and the lobby is is mentioned devote himself to the service and well being of the people of india okay so these are the three points the content of oath oath is administered by cji or senior most judge already told you acting president consider that if uh, president of india actually dies okay god forbid but if dies what is going to happen that person is in position dies so now vice president has to act as acting president but vice president for that has to take oath oath will be same but vice president will as act as acting president not full fledged president okay it means we are going to wait for the fresh election okay now conditions of president should not be a member 
of either house of parliament as i told you lok sabha rajya sabha or any state legislature you should not be office of profit you should not be at office of profit emoluments allowances privileges of office of president are decided by parliament please remember these are decided by parliament personal immunity or another point is if you are appointed as president elected as president now your uh, salary your renown your remunerations allowances they cannot be diminished during your tenure okay personal immunity as is, is provided for all the legal aspect of the office when for example you are signing a particular file on the advice of counsel of minister so you cannot be dragged into court that why you signed that file right you are getting immunity for all official acts so this is official act what about personal act so there are two kind of act official act and personal act so in personal act there can be two kind of you can say uh, offenses a person can do for example civil offenses and criminal offenses so in case of criminal offenses you are immune from criminal proceedings even in respect of personal acts but i am immune till what point immune only till the point you are president of india okay it is not like you you can murder anyone and you can say i am president of india nothing can happen to me the point you are removed from this position then police will knock your door sir please give us some chance right now civil proceedings in case of civil proceedings means proceedings can actually start against you but you will be given a two months notice okay during the term of office in respect of his personal act but civil proceedings in case of personal act okay civil proceedings like uh, there's a case of tax fraud revenue issue land issue family issue in this case two months notice will be given okay i hope official personal personal two cases i think criminal and civil they, these are clear to you right now term of president office term is 5 year beyond this until his successor assumes charge a person will be on this position eligible for re-election because there's no bind you know binding thing that there's a limit of two time three time nothing as such as mentioned in our constitution you can resign from your position and this resignation to be given to whom vice president please remember oath was given by cgi or senior most judge of supreme court but when it comes to resign resign was given to vice president can be removed by impeachment so impeachment is a process which is done in parliament so what can be the basis of impeachment important topic because many times question has been asked so our constitution says violation of constitution is going to be the basis of impeachment but what is going to be considered as violation of constitution what is the definition of violation of constitution it is not defined here, there so it is prerogative of parliament to define what is going to be considered as violation of constitution okay so now let's understand the process of impeachment <clears throat> impeachment means we are going to remove honorable president now this process can start either in lok sabha or rajya sabha right can start from any house lok sabha or rajya sabha and the condition says at least one fourth members of the house to si should sign the proposal and give it to the uh, to the presiding officer of that house for example we start this process from lok sabha okay so one fourth member of the lok sabha they are going to make the proposal and they are going to present before the speaker so now when when speaker is going to see the proposal now speaker is going to give 14 days notice to the honorable president okay after this lok sabha is going to bring resolution in this regard and this resolution need to be passed by majority of 2/3 of the total strength please remember i am not talking about present and voting total strength of the house you need to get it passed from 2 by 3 majority right and when it is passed from this house then this proposal will be transferred to other house say rajya sabha then rajya sabha after receiving this process is going to conduct inquiry means inquiry is going to be conducted by second house please remember means if this process starts from say rajya sabha then inquiry is going to be conducted in lok sabha if process starts from lok sabha then inquiry is going to be conducted by the second house that is rajya sabha so when they conduct inquiry and they submit this report before whole house then they are going to bring this resolution right to vote 
so they also need two by third majority of the total strength of the house when this is passed from this year then it is declared that president is impeached now president is done removed from his position okay now my question is when one fourth members of the house presented proposal before speaker that sir we need to remove honorable president we have credible proof against honorable president that he has or she has violated constitution is it mandatory on the speaker to actually bring this proposal in the house or at the speaker stage itself a speaker can say okay you are saying but i i do not agree and that is why i am not allowing this impeachment process to start in lok sabha what do you think is truth means is it mandatory or not mandatory tell me in comment box so now <clears throat> this process is clear to you now this is mentioned here in words one fourth members of the house frame charges 14 days notice to be given passed by two third after that other house other house has to investigate the charges president has the right to appear and represent at such investigation right president them may himself or herself can be present president can also send someone other house has to sustain the charge and pass the impeachment resolution by two third told you president stands removed impeachment is a quasi judicial process why we call it quasi judicial because house is actually conducting the inquiry investigation house is also deciding whether oh the charges are proved this is not going into court because when you use the word judicial it means now legal courts are going to work but in this case it is not the case right elected members of the state up now who is not going to participate obviously it is quite clear to you in this whole process of impeachment have i ever mentioned a state legislature no so there is no role of state legislature elected member of state legislative assembly participated in election of president but not in removal right now have i mentioned that only elected members of the parliament elected members of lok sabha are going to participate in this no i told you 2 by 3rd of the total strength and when i am saying 2 by 3rd of total strength i need maximum strength there are nominated members are also going to participate in the removal okay so elected members of the state ut let us do not participate in impeachment although no president has so far been impeached abhi tak koi impeach nahi hua clear nominated members of the either house of parliament can participate in the impeachment i told you right so this is clear to you now vacancy in the office in what case this position can be vacant number 1 if five year tenure is going to be completed so although before that president is uh, this uh, this election commission of india is bound to conduct election right but what if there is resignation president resigns president can resign to vice president then position will be vacant vp will be acting as acting president but not full fledged president right means position is vacant there can be impeachment like like we discussed there can be death right or there can be disqualification also for example in our example shweta became president of india so prem may file a case in supreme court sir shweta shweta's election should be declared null and void because shweta in her paper said she is 36 years age but she is 32 years of age because i got these credible proofs so on this basis shweta's election can be disqualified right so on this case in this case also this position of president can be vacant but what is going to happen with the actions which shweta took in these two months when she was president of india after that she was disqualified due to forged documents but whether the actions which were taken by her during these two months whether those will be null and void or not answer is no it means action taken by shweta by being in the position of president will remain intact okay so if there is vacancy within 6 months you have to conduct election new president remains in office for 5 years okay for example uh, uh, someone actually was president for one year but after that, that person resigned so now the fresh election is going to happen and the next person is going to be in this position for next 5 years it's not like now this person is going to be for 4 years no until election happens vp is going to act as acting president okay when a sitting president is unable to discharge his functions due to absence illness or otherwise who is going to work vice president is going to work as acting president okay so vp if vp's post is also vacant 
then what is going to happen then cgi or senior most judges of supreme court are going to act as acting president so it means first president if president is gone then vice president if vice president is gone then cgi if cgi also gone then senior most supreme court judge and we have line of supreme court judges so you need not to worry there will be someone working as acting president okay any acting president enjoys all the powers and immunities of the president and is entitled to privileges emoluments allowances as determined by parliament okay but there is a trick here trap here <coughs> although lakshmikant is quite direct in this regard trap is what if president is ill and in this case vice president is working as acting president so in this case do you what do you think this acting president will get full salary of president answer is no because already president is alive president is there and that person is drawing salary of president so two persons are not going to get salary of president but in case president die disqualify impeached resign it means there's no person drawing salary of president in that case if anyone acting as vice president acting as acting president then in this case that person is going to draw emolument salary of president okay please remember this now these are some questions for you for practice procedure of impeachment of the president of india is told you quasi judicial process electoral college of president of india not consist of whom come on member of legislative council of state told you lc is not included first president of india who got elected anonymously so this is a factual question neelam sanjeev reddy was there how many times the president of india can be reelected told you there's no limit any number of times so i hope now qualification election impeachment part is clear to you see you in the next video there we are going to discuss different kind of powers with respect to office of president the pdf is going to be available in shashank tyagi for you telegram group you can connect with me in my personal insta handle also if you are using instagram shashank.powerbeam if you have any doubt whatsoever i'll be there to help you out see you